You're listening to Tim Bulkley's Five Minute Bible. There are a collection of texts in Jeremiah that have been known collectively to scholars since at least the end of the 19th century as the Confessions of Jeremiah. I haven't been able to find out the origins of the phrase, or exactly what it was meant to mean at the start. Though when you read them it's obvious that it doesn't mean that Jeremiah is confessing his sins. It must be that he's confessing his God. He's announcing his allegiance to and belief in God, his trust in God. That meaning of confess, and not the police court type. But by the beginning of the twentieth century both the list of passages to be included and the name was well established in scholarship, with just a few details to debate about exactly which passages to include among the confessions of Jeremiah. These are a series of passages in which Jeremiah struggles with himself and God about his calling, his opponents, and about God's seeming failure to act. Since the early twentieth century, with the writings of the German scholar Baumgartner, we have been well aware that these passages are very like lament psalms, lament psalms being the commonest kind genre of psalm in the book of psalms. Those psalms also debate with God. They often contain a complaint section, for example. Those psalms seem to imply a response from God, though the response isn't recorded in the book of psalms. They often have enemies of the, the speaker of the psalm, and they often use language comparing either themselves, the speaker, or their opponents with animals, as in Jeremiah. And those psalms often contain confessions of faith or even short hymns of praise or of thanksgiving, like in Jeremiah. So since Baumgartner we've been well aware that there are, is a sense in which these passages, the confessions of Jeremiah, are conventional like psalms. They follow a set of well-known rules, unwritten rules, uh, for how you compose such a passage. As a result many scholars began to read these passages as products of a tradition rather than as product of a single great soul, Jeremiah. But other scholars continued to read them as a window onto Jeremiah's soul. You see, that's certainly how the book of Jeremiah as a whole feels to most readers. The book is full of highly emotive language, more so than even the other prophets, and all of the prophets are fairly emotional. It's full of personal language, and it is full of, especially in these confessions, passages in which we have the feel of someone arguing with God. The result is that it's not only ordinary readers who read this book as being a, a way of seeing into the very person of Jeremiah. The great German scholar of the middle of the twentieth century, Gerhard von Rad, saw this clearly, and he saw it as the big new thing in prophecy that the book of Jeremiah introduced into the world of Israelite prophecy. Now, all that's very exciting, and you can argue about it for hours on end, and scholars do. I want to bypass all those historical questions, though, because I think they've introduced more fight than light. And I want to ask, rather, how do these confessions develop the characters of Jeremiah and God as they're presented in the book? And so, in the light of that, what theology do these passages teach? Now, I've been talking about these passages and the confessions of Jeremiah. You need to know that there are six of them traditionally. Again, as I say, there's arguments about the details, but the big picture's there. Jeremiah 11, 18 to 20, Jeremiah 21 to 6, Jeremiah 15, 10 to 21, Jeremiah 17, 14 to 18, Jeremiah 18, 18 to 23, and Jeremiah 20, 7 to 13. I'm actually going to treat them as five because I'm going to read the first two passages together since they follow each other in the text. And in the subsequent podcast, this one having introduced the idea of the confessions of Jeremiah, I want to explore those passages asking of them what kind of a picture of Jeremiah, the character in the book, and what kind of a picture of Jeremiah's God do they develop? How do they characterize? And as a result of that question, I want to ask what are they teaching us about theology? If you want to learn more about characterization, 
I have other podcasts on that subject. Bye for now. I hope I'm back soon with the rest of this series.